What's up guys, Luke here, and I'm back with another episode of Luke's Laptops. And this is a laptop I have covered before. It is my Dell Latitude C600. It was in a video where it was chirping quite a lot. So, this is a Pentium 3 laptop with a 1 GHz processor. It has a Windows 2000 sticker on it, which I'm not too worried about seeing because it's not XP. It has an HI Rage M3 or M4 mobility graphics processor in it, and it uses the good old 440BX chipset, if I remember correctly. One of its biggest handicaps is the fact that there's only one USB port, and I can't remember where it is. Uh, there. It's right next to a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, what I am assuming is part of the cooling. And you've got VGA, you've got the docking connector, you've got parallel and serial. And then on this side there's S-Video out, Ethernet and modem, and microphone and headphones. Speakers on each side. And we've got the hard drive in here, and two card bus slots, which I believe do work. I remember at least testing one of them. In the front, like the Inspiron 8000 you saw earlier, you have the battery here, and you have this time a modular DVD drive because there's no DVD drive built into the laptop. So, this is quite a rare version of the Latitude C600 because it is the 1400 by 1050 screen model. Now, with the Inspiron, that was actually the basement screen option. There was a 1600 by 1200 option. This laptop was designed for XP. As you can see, the track point is rubber is missing, so I may well try and source that at some point, or but I won't because the keyboard itself needs replacing. This key doesn't fit on anymore, and also it's not an English grade keyboard, as will be evidenced by this and these extra keys over here. I don't know what keyboard this is, but it ain't English, that's for sure. Not much in the way of multimedia independent buttons up here. This is running Windows 2000 of course. Now there are a few cosmetic problems. So one can be evidence when I do this. So that's going to need some repairing. It needs a screw put in there but it also needs some sort of thread lock to hold the screw. And then possibly something like some masking tape. Or something like that to keep the thing actually closed. I'll work that out when I get there. Okay, so there's also a couple of minor chips on the screen, as you may have seen in the previous video. But, without any further ado, let's turn the beast on. It's a 14-inch screen, I think. Bars is all the way up to date, I think. Got a little bit of the character of full noises that it did have. Now, it's a real shame that the screen does have those small chips in an eye. May well try and find a way of sourcing them. Hard drive is quite noisy. It's only a 4200 RPM drive. It was originally in a compact laptop that I was trying to fix up, but then I discovered signs of liquid damage inside, and as a result, the system had been acting up quite badly. So, running Windows 2000 Pro, which is very nice for a laptop, as you can tell this was a professional grade laptop, just like the Inspiron. Although probably with a more suitable OS for such a thing. Indeed, the Latitude line usually was the sort of the more office type laptop. So you can also see the same sort of key alignment that the Inspiron had. But those these the F or N F1 trick to get into setup doesn't work in Windows 2000. It's not a quick boot. It has 384 megabytes of RAM. It originally had 256, but I pinched a 1 to 8 meg stick from the dead compact laptop, and it makes a bit of a difference. I will probably put it up to 512 meg, but we will see. You can see Windows starting up, and you can just about see one of the worst chips there. There's also one around here but it doesn't really pick up on camera 
and I think there's one over here but again it probably doesn't pick up on camera just loading up windows now the speakers on this laptop are very good for a laptop of its age the laptop itself is in reasonable condition USB port works fine the battery I had it running sort of idle and it did go to sleep a couple of times but it went for about three hours now I think when I was at, if I was actually to use it properly it would last about two the battery's probably very flat because it's not been used for a while what have we got? 8% yeah I pretty much flattened it last time I used it it's got quite a loud hard drive as I said and also that sort of whistle noise shall we? may try and find out what's going on But for its, for its time, it's a very good little laptop. And again, it suffers the same sort of issue that the Inspiron 8000 did with a chipset limitation that will stop you, unfortunately, going all the way up to sort of 1 gig of RAM, which XP and even 2000 do like quite a lot. So, let's open up speed fan here. You can see the temperatures are quite reasonable. If we go into the smart, you will see that the hard drive is some improperly identified thing. And it's just got this IC tag. I can't remember exactly what I put in this. It might be an IBM Travel Star drive. I think it might have been. So it's running at 945 MHz at the moment. So, yeah. It's a fairly solid system. That doesn't help me. I think it's a 440BX chipset in here. Certainly not the 815. I remember it being the same as a compact laptop, which definitely had a 440BX in it. But, or the not laptop equivalent, so it's probably a 440MX. But back in the days when they used desktop chipsets, just marginally modified, and desktop processors just binned a bit just to get the laptops going wasn't the best solution but it's what they had to do at the time anyway I think that's going to conclude this video so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like comment and if you're new to my channel please subscribe and maybe share my videos really help me out and I hope to see you here in the very near future with more of these laptop videos and Hopefully gaming videos when I actually bother to buy a microphone stand. Look out and have a good day folks. See you guys.